May we kindly stand as we begin our service. to welcome you to our church service which mostly is online and those that have joined us thank you so very much may the good lord bless you we welcome you to our service and before we begin the service uh, let's continue to maintain the social distancing and to keep all the health regulations that we have to keep allow me also to congratulate those that sat their grade sevens and are now into grade eight congratulations god bless you even those that wrote their grade nine and they're now getting to grade 10 thank you so much god bless you we love you so much you have made us proud let us begin our service in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit the lord be with you praise the lord blessed be god the father son and the holy spirit Together we pray the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that he may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The saying is sure and worth of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to serve the sinners. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. So in humbleness, together we pray, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penance we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may save you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. The Collect. Heavenly Father, your love is everlasting in our lives. Help us to show genuine love to one another that we may be known as your true disciples through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may please be seated. Our first Bible lesson. Hosea chapter 2, verse 16 to 23. And in that day, says the Lord, you will call me my husband, and no longer will you call me my bow, for I will remove the names of the bows from, the, from her mouth, and they shall be mentioned by name no more and I will make for you a covenant 
on that day with the beast of the field the birds of the air and the creeping things of the ground and I will abolish the bow the sword and war from the land and I will make you lie down in safety and I will betroth you to me forever I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice in steadfast love and in mercy I will betroth you to me in faithfulness and you shall know the Lord and in that day says the Lord I will answer the heavens and they shall answer the earth and the earth shall answer the grain the wine and the oil and they shall answer Jezreel and I will sow him for myself in the land and I will have pity on not pitied and I will say to not my people you are my people and he shall say thou art my God this is the reading of the first Bible lesson some appointed some Pointed Psalm 143, verse 1 to 10. 143, verse 1 to 10. Blessed be Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my rock and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield. And he in whom I take refuge, who subdue the peoples under him. O Lord, what is man that thou dost regard him, or the son of man that thou doest think of him? Man is like a breath, his days are like a passing shadow. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down touch the mountains that they smoke flash forth the lightning and scatter them send out thy arrows and root them stretch forth thy hand from on high rescue me and deliver me from the many waters from the hands of the aliens whose mouth speak lies and whose right hand is at a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song to thee, O God, upon a ten stringed harp. I will play to thee, who gives victory to kings, who rescues David thy servant. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now. Please be seated for the second Bible lesson. Our second Bible lesson, second, First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse four. First Corinthians. Chapter 13, verse 4. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not, it is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecy, it will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. 
for our knowledge will impact will imperfect and our prophecy is imperfect but when the perfect comes the imperfect will pass away here the bible reading Shall we please rise as we read the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. John chapter 15 beginning to read at the ninth verse glory to Christ our Savior as the Father has loved me so have I loved you abide in my love if you keep my commandments you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the father in my name he may give it to you this i command you to love one another this is the gospel of christ praise to christ our lord shall we please bow our heads as we pray Father, speak to us again this morning. Grant us understanding of your word. Give us grace that the word we will hear this morning will touch our hearts and will draw us closer to you. For we pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may please be seated. we will be looking at the theme this morning God's love to humanity God's love to humanity and just by way of introduction as I'm sure we all know today is Valentine's Day and it's a day when a lot of people all over the globe choose to celebrate love the way they know how and so if you go to the malls now around town you see everywhere colored in red with shapes of hearts and so on and so forth if you listen to the radio they will tell you love is in the air as if on other days love is not in the air and uh, today again a lot of people will make a lot of money selling gifts a lot of people will lose money buying gifts some will be sad saying no I don't have somebody to celebrate Valentine's Day with others will be happy and so on and so forth but the critical question to ask in all of that is what love are we celebrating 
what do we understand by love and that's very important because if you read some dictionaries you may see definitions like this that love is an intense feeling of deep affection and um, that is right in some aspects and why I say is right in some aspects is because the English word love does not fully express you know what the biblical love expresses in its Greek context so that English word love is kind of limited because in the Greek they have four different words that could go for love they had eros which speaks of sexual love or sensual love they had stoge which is love between family members this way you love your brother your sister they had philia which is love between friends you know and then they had agape which is the god kind of love but you see in english when we say love then you're unable to tell which of these four we're referring to and that's why a lot of people would use love in a way that is not what God is referring to in his word so in the church of God when we speak of love our understanding of love is the God kind of love agape love and that's the kind of love Jesus was talking to us about and so that is the focus of the love we'll be looking at today so our theme God's love to humanity and just to let us know from the introduction of course we are speaking of agape love the God kind of love which is not a feeling it's not of the emotion agape is of the will which basically means I have decided that I will show care and concern for this person irrespective of the circumstance that is agape and that's very important because if you look at the way God's love has manifested to humanity through the ages you will see that all along humanity never treated God well but that did not diminish the love of God and that's because the love we're speaking of here is agape or the God kind of love so briefly I just want us to look at three examples of how God showed love to humanity and the response of men and women in other words humanity to God number one God's love for his people Israel despite their waywardness and that's part of what you read in Hosea so in that Hosea if you back up to verse 2 and you start reading from verse 2 you will see that the people of Israel the covenant people of God left God and went after Baal and other gods with small g in quotes so which basically is like adultery God was covenanted to his people married to his people and they left him and were following other lesser gods and so if you start reading from that verse 2 you will see where God will say now you've provoked me I'm angry all the blessings have been given out I withhold them and you get to verse 14 he says I will take you back to the wilderness and there I will profess my love to you again so that you can come to love me so in spite of all what Israel did to God God's response to them was not to throw them away permanently he was always looking for a way to still bring them back to himself and that's very important and if you then look at Hosea go all the way down to Hosea 14 4 
you see where he says i will heal their backsliding i will love them freely so you see the way god shows love even where it's like in a marriage or let me use a modern day example that many people can understand since today is valentine you've arranged with someone maybe someone you've planned a valentine dinner with you've gone and booked a meal in an expensive hotel candle light, light dinner and all uh, uh, lit dinner and all of that and then you went to take the person let's go and you see the person going out with another person what to be your response will you be happy many of us will say never in fact you have crossed the line forget it but that was what israel kept doing to god and that is what we continue to do to god even today and he has not thrown us away instead he keeps looking for a way to bring us back to himself that is agape love that's one example number two example we see that in god's love for the world while we were yet sinners and you can see it in romans chapter 5 and verse 8 he says but god has shown his love how much he loves us it was while we were yet sinners that christ died for us so christ didn't say until you clean up and stop doing all these things before we come and die at the height of our sin the love of god was manifested he came to die it's like living with a rebellious partner or someone who detests you and at the height of their quarrel with you they called you names they walked out on you that is when you now thought it fit to show the greatest care for them so that is agape very important so we need to differentiate between the love that god expects of us and what the world is talking about today we need to be clear a third example is the response of jesus to peter you recall that before jesus went to the cross he had told peter one of his disciples before the cock crows you would deny me three times and peter said never not me now that not only happened but peter went a step further so after christ had risen from the dead at one time peter told the others you know i think we should go back to our fishing business you can see that in john 21 you can start to read from verse 3 and so he took them he said i go out fishing and they said well since you are the head we also will follow you and they went to fish so the message that christ had committed to them the reason christ came and died peter was just about to annul it by taking the people back to their former way of life and so the bible says they fished all night they caught nothing and then in the morning jesus came to them although they didn't recognize him and he said children did you catch anything they said no he said okay put it on this side and they did and they called 153 large fish we are told then one of them john the beloved said this must be the lord and so they scampered back to land and when they came back to land he had prepared a nice meal for them of fish and bread this is peter he denied you three times this is peter about to ruin your ministry and then the response jesus gave to him was you want fish take it in abundance then they come to land he prepares food for them who does that kind of thing would you do that but that is agape and that is who we are and that is the love god is speaking about and then he says to peter three times do you love me more than this so the love question must be answered because on the side of god god has shown his love to us he has made it manifest jesus has died for us that's the greatest display of love for god so loved the world 
that he gave his only son that whoever believes will not perish so he has shown it he's not in doubt very important and what are the attributes of this love which was what we saw in our reading of the first Corinthians chapter 13 and I'll just read a few verses there first Corinthians chapter 13 you start to read from verse 4 and I will read from verse 4 to verse 7 and then we'll talk a bit on that first Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 4 to verse 7 describing this love he says love is patient and kind very important love is not jealous or boastful it is not arrogant or rude love does not insist on its own way it is not irritable or resentful so even when the other person does what is wrong you don't resent them you can resent their acts but you don't resent them it does not rejoice in wrong but rejoices in the right then he goes on to say some heavy things which each time i read it i am humbled he says love bears all things what's the meaning of all all means everything is that correct he said love bears all things meaning no matter what people do to you just the same way we do all sorts of things to God on a daily basis he forgives us love bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things so love does not keep a diary of wrongs you know you did this today you've come again that's not the language of love remember i warned you about this thing before now you started again that's not love talking very important and that's why he says that love never ends so whereas things like prophecy manifestations of knowledge and all those things will come to an end he says love does not end very important so what does god expect of us who are his children and now this is where i'll be wrapping up the message the key thing we need to know is that as they say like father like children you expect your child to carry on like you is that not correct and so the bible lets us know in john chapter 1 verse 11 all the way to 13 it says that we are born not of blood nor of the will of man but we are born of god he said and whoever he said he came to his own his own did not receive him but to them that received him he gave power to become children of god which were born not of blood or of the will of man but of god meaning we are born of god so the moment you say you believe in jesus and you've accepted him new birth happens you are born of god and therefore the expectation of god is that my children should be like me you remember when god made man initially god made us in his image and likeness which image was corrupted by sin but jesus came to restore that in the new birth and so it's important for us to know that we are expected to be like him which is why several you hear jesus say therefore be perfect like your father so he was saying be like your father and you hear jesus tell the jews at times when they would say he said you are born in sin they'll say no abraham was our father he said no abraham is not your father because if he was your father you will do the works of abraham and that speaks of you have to be like your father because you have the makeup of your father the same spirit in your father is in you as a child of god so what is the expectation of god for us 
and I'll just go through five of them very briefly. Number one is that God wants us to understand that his nature is love. That is critical. Understanding that his nature is love and that our new nature has also become love. And you can see that in 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another, because love comes from God. Whoever loves is a child of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. So the entirety of God is love. If you see where, when God introduced himself to Moses in the Old Covenant in Exodus 34 from verse 6, and you know the way most introductions go. If I'm trying to introduce myself to you, I say the most important thing you need to know about me. Maybe I tell you my name and, you know, things that you need to know, the critical things. And it, when you go home, read what God said to Moses there. All the things he kept mentioning had to do with love. 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 The Lord. The Lord God. Merciful and gracious. Just everything showing mercy, showing love. That's who God is. So that's number one. The second thing God wants us to know or expect of us is to understand that the Holy Spirit has brought the love of God into our hearts and therefore we have the capability to love like God you can see that in Romans chapter 5 from verse 5 Romans 5 5 5 b he said for the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit so we cannot say well that's Jesus I can't do it I mean, a human being, I can no, that's wrong. The moment you're a child of God, that same love of God has been put there in you and in me by the Holy Spirit. Very important. Number three, thing that God wants us to know is to understand that love is the proof that we have been truly saved. So the proof that we are truly saved is not to come to church, it's not to clap, it's not to... He said, love is that proof. And you can see that in 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. And I will read it. 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. We know that we have left death and come over into life. We know it because we love our brothers and sisters. Whoever does not love is still under the power of death. So you can speak in tongues, you can do whatever, you can do signs and wonders. If you are not having this agape love and showing it to one another, the Bible says you are still under the power of death. You have not come to life. Because love is the proof that we have come to life. Number four, God's expectation is for us to be a people of love showing to the world the love of God. Very important. Manifesting the love of God to a dying world. So our identity is love. That's why Jesus said, by this, by loving one another. All men we know that you are my disciples. This is the identity, love. This is the identity. And I'll share a very quick story. There's an Anglican priest in my country. He's late now. He was priested in 1918, Reverend Hezekiah Nweje. He has become somewhat of a mythical figure and I never knew why. They call him Holy Mwege. So anytime you do something good, people say, you are doing like Holy Mwege. So I was wondering, well, who is this person? Then one day I heard one of our archbishops tell a story about the man. The archbishop himself is late now. So apparently, when the, in those days when Christianity first came, you know, the churches were given land far away from people. They gave them land where they, 
was where the owners of the land expected them to go and die. So this man was there in his house one day with his family, and thieves came there, stole his things, started beating him and all members of his family seriously in the night. So they started screaming, and the villagers heard them. And as the villagers started running to help them, the thieves carrying their things started running away. And this old man, the priest, dragged himself to the door and was shouting after the priest, after the thieves, please, my children, that direction you are running, there's a big ditch there. You will hurt yourselves. Go to the left. Now, who does that kind of thing today? People came to your house, they beat you, they stole your things, they are running away with your things, and then you are begging them, please, there is a big ditch there, you get hot. But that is agape. That is the love of God. That's who we are. Number five, and the last, as we close. God's expectation is for us to abide in his love by keeping his commandments. The proof that we love God is that we do his commandments. And you can see that in John chapter 15, verse 9 and 10. John 14, 21 and 23. In conclusion, whereas the world may not know what love means, because they look up their meaning from the dictionary, it's a feeling. The Bible is clear, and those of us who are the children of God understand the love God is talking about. It is agape, it is of the will. And so that love can love somebody who hates you. And that's why Jesus said we should love our enemies. Of the flesh, we can't do it. But God has given us his spirit so that we are able to do what God can do. We are able to manifest the kind of love he has. And that is the message. And so as we go around today, Valentine's Day and all other days, and as we prepare for Lent, the Lenten season is starting on Wednesday. If we have people that we have not forgiven, people who have hurt us, irrespective of what they have done, even as Israel did terrible things to God, even as we continue to do terrible things to God today, and he has forgiven us, that is the message. We are people of love. Let us show love to the world. Let us manifest that God's kind of love, agape love, because that is our identity. That is who we are. And as we do that, the world will know that we belong to Christ. And they too will come to him because of love. Bow our heads. Let us pray. In our prayers, I want you to talk to God. Thank him for the word you've heard today. Thank him for grace to be alive and well. Thank him for grace to be in his sanctuary. Thank him for your loved ones. Thank him for protection. Thank him for preservation. Thank him for provision. Thank him for journey mercy, for healing from sickness. Thank him for his numerous mercies poured out upon us on a daily basis. Thank him that he has not responded to you and to me according to what we deserve, but that his love, his agape love, has been the benchmark with which he has dealt with us as humans. Thank him above all for salvation, the salvation of our soul, that Christ came while we were yet sinners. In our prayer, start to remember the church of God, pray for the leadership of the church, Remembering the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, our Archbishop Albert, our Bishop David, our Dean, Father Charlie, and all other clergy. Let's pray that the hand of the Lord will continue to be upon us, that we may be light in this dark world, that we may show his love, that we may be who we have been called to be. Let's pray for our members. Remember those who are sick in the hospital. Remember those who are mourning the loss of dear ones. Remember those who are going through one season of trial or challenge or pain or the other. Pray that the Lord will be with them. Pray for those who will be traveling the course of this new week by air, by sea, by land. That God will grant them journey mercies. 
Pray that in his love and in his faithfulness, the Lord will continue to enable us to do his will. In a moment, I want you to bring your own personal requests, your petitions to the throne of grace. What do you want God to do for you? He said, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too difficult for me to do? Ask God for that thing which will make your joy full. He said, ask until your joy is full. Talk to him. This is a serious time of prayer. You are with your creator. Talk to him. He's a faithful God. He answers prayers. He said unto him that answers prayers, all flesh shall come. In closing, reflect upon the words you have heard in the course of the psalm. God's love for humanity. The agape kind of love. Which same love has been put in you and has been put in me? Are there people who have offended you and you are yet to forgive them? Are there people who you have said, I will never talk to this person again. I will never relate to this person again. If only you knew what they did to me. What they did to you. Is it up to what you have done to God and you continue to do to God daily? And yet in Christ Jesus, God has forgiven us. Why don't you repent? Commit the season of Lent that is coming into the hands of God. Pray that during this season, we'll see the need to return again to God in repentance, in changing our minds, our hearts, in taking firm decisions that we love regardless of what people do to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And so, Heavenly Father, you promise that when two or more are gathered in your name, you will be in their midst. And you say, whatsoever two or more of us touch and agree upon, you will do it. Lord, that which your people have brought to you at this time, in unison, Father, grant our requests, grant our prayers, to the honor and glory of your name. For we have prayed with thanksgiving. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. At this point we will go straight to the offering. Tithe and thanksgiving. As the praise team through the keyboard gives us that slow, nice instrument. Thank you.
notices firstly I would like to through the Dean to congratulate uh, the the newly priests that were ordained yesterday thank you so much for your prayers and your support that you have given to them today they've taken uh, just a relaxed day so that uh, they properly transition into the office of the priesthood. Let's continue to pray with them and to wish them well in this new ministry. All those who intend to get married, please inform the clergy six months before your wedding day. Application forms are available at the office. We pray for the sick. Mando Stangala, Mr. Richard Sinkambe, and Bishop Peter Hancock of Bath and Wells. Birthdays, we celebrate with thanksgiving for Nkatia Lea Stangala, who will, who was celebrating her birthday, her 11th birthday on the 13th of February 2021. Ash Wednesday. Uh, we kindly request uh, for Pam branches used last year to be brought to church office before Wednesday, the 17th of February, because on the 17th of February, Wednesday, it will be Ash Wednesday. Now, because of this new normal that we are in, so we're going to do the service online at 10 hours. So please tune in, let's participate at 10 hours so that together we can go through the prayers of repentance then we are going to burn the ashes and the ashes will be available at church after Wednesday meaning Thursday Friday going forward the ashes will be available and there'll be a prayer uh, inserted just beside the ashes so that at any time that you'd love to come through you can come and uh, administer those ashes on your own as you uh, recite the prayer which you put uh, besides the ashes so please let's take that note and let's make sure we in, we inform whosoever we should inform so that on Wednesday we participate through the online service the AGM reports also group leaders and ministry leaders to submit annual reports for 2021 through the cathedral email so tithe and envelopes be informed that the tithe and envelopes for 2021 are available at the entrance of the church. Kindly write your tithe number on the monthly tithe envelopes. On Saturday, we'll have the confirmation service at 9 hours. So all the candidates, please be ready and you have to be here right on time uh, in preparation for the confirmation service which will be on Saturday at 9 and all those that have been invited so it is strictly by invitation so those that have been invited for the confirmation uh, service please do attend the service with a heavy heart we announce the death of Mr. John Kayamba uh, who will be buried on Tuesday at 10 hours memor memorial park now because of the restrictions and everything so please kindly if you can drop them a message give them a phone call just to show that we are together in these trying moments at this particular time I'll ask the congregation to stand let us pray for the offering tithe and thanksgiving eternal and sovereign God we want to give you praise and glory for the gift of life and the ability to make wealth. Now, Lord, may you bless these offerings, tithe, and thanksgiving that has been given to you for the kingdom use. We ask of you in the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Please, let's encourage one another a sign of peace without any physical contact.
the Lord's Prayer. So as Christ has taught us, we are bored to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on heaven. Daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So together we pray, Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you so much. Here ends our service.